name is Anna Langstedt and this is Stefan Gustafsson. We work with Rescue Archaeology in Sweden, the park firm Archaeology Consult. And today we will talk about the establishment of the town Enköping in central Sweden during the late 11th century. And this place lacked previous indications of being a central place in the surrounding landscape. And the written sources that describe this process have been inadequate and previous archaeological investigations in this town have not been able to capture this process. However, recent and extensive archaeological excavations in Yerköping has resulted in new perspectives of the early history and the urbanization of the town. And we want to investigate on a micro level how these remains can provide new perspectives on the earliest history of Yerköping. So, our presentation today will consist of the following parts. We will talk about the distribution of central places in the surrounding landscape. And I will give a short presentation of the excavation itself. And then we will present uh, the history of the place before the town. And uh, also present the early phases of the urban settlements. And we will conclude with some food culture in the medieval town. So, Jöping, situated in, by the Lake Mälaren in eastern middle Sweden. And today it's a very small town, ranking number 42 in Sweden. However, during the Middle Ages, the town has a much more prominent uh, position in the Swedish kingdom. For example, it was a very important place for the church of the province of Uppland. And there was also later several meetings be between the king and the people situated in the town. As a result <coughs> of the shore displacement in this area, the town lost its connection to the water, and it was no longer possible to transport goods by boats. This is thought to be the main cause of the decline of the city during the late Middle Ages. So this is the province of Uppland in eastern Sweden, and uh, former this province was, was uh, divided into uh, three or four original provinces, Folkland, and Enköping was a central place in one of these provinces, Järveland. The town was located on the, on the Esker, just on the spot where the Esker met the bay of the Lake Mälaren. And this location had been considered to be the main course of the foundation of the town in this place. And it has been suggested that the town was preceded by a pre-medieval marketplace, even though there are no concrete evidence for this fact in the material. The town was also situated on the border between two administrative divisions called Haradar, or earlier also called Hundreds. And this, uh, Location just on the border. This is a very common fact for Swedish towns. And in the landscape around Enköping, you can find several places with the indication of high social status or central functions. And on this map, we can see uh, the red dots, large burial mounds. Now, many of these have special names, as for example, the grave of King Harald. And the yellow squares uh, symbolize uh, villages with a place named Husby. Uh, and these are thought to be indicated places with central function connected to the kingdom during the 11th and 12th century. And uh, the black cross is early stone churches. And they can probably be connected to the wealthy magnet farms in this area, which had the resources to build these expensive churches. And then we add the prehistoric cemeteries uh, in the picture. Uh, it, um, we can see that it uh, confirms the picture of central areas in this region. And in Shopping here is situated just between the central places. Therefore, no example, no large burial mounds uh, in this or concentration of prehistoric cemeteries close to Enköping. And we would like to suggest that the town was founded in a new place in the social landscape. 
in a place between several magnet farms and on the border between two historical districts. So we will now take a closer look at Enshapi and our excavation in the town. And this map shows the city plan before 1800. And we can see there are three medieval churches in the north part of the city, surrounded by stones with runic inscriptions. But these are moved here from other places in the landscape. And two of the churches have been dated to the late 12th century. Mm -hmm. And the red dots marks early datings, dendro datings, from the 12th century. And the red square in the middle here marks an early grave find uh, probably from the 11th century. And we can see the excavated area in the eastern part of the city. And next picture, if you add the shoreline, we can see that the excavated area is close connected to the water. And south of the uh, city is an island with a monastery dating to the 13th century. Uh, many of the structure of this map, the squids and so on, uh, has been shown to be, have relevance also for medieval conditions in Shafiim. If we zoom into this area and add the structures, we can see that the structure that we find also fits in in these patterns from the historical map. <coughs> now I'll take some short facts about the excavation. Uh, we excavated more, uh, the excavated area covered more than 3,000 square meters. And the period uh, is from the uh, second half of the 11th century to the second half of the 14th century. And the stru structures that we excavated was uh, medieval houses, cobblestone streets, uh, wooden fences, wells, and so on. And the finds. Uh, consisted of household objects like ceramics, wooden bowls, etc., personal items like combs or buckles, and waste products from different, different crops. In the next picture, we can see some examples of the structure, like sealstone houses, log houses, uh, this cobblestone street, and here are some wooden objects from the excavation. Now, earlier in history. Some short facts about the <coughs> location of Ian Chirping. It, it was established in a landscape with pastures and farms. Based on like botanical uh, evidence, we can see that the vegetation was characterized by an open grassland uh, with some varying de degrees of moisture. In addition to the meadow plants, there were some trees and uh, bushes, and uh, along the shoreline we had some trees and willows as well. This was a very stable plant community, and the land use didn't uh, cause any significant erosions. When in chopping grow and expand, this will change with flooding and erosion as a result of the urban activities. Uh, this problem will remain throughout the Middle Ages. The residents utilized different strategies to make uh, the shoreline accessible to various activities such as fishing, trade and communication. This work were made investments in the town which provides a perspective on the potential resources that the town's elite had to manage. So this is the first phase of the urban settlement, uh, and, and we can see that there are narrow plots marked by ditches, and we have three <coughs> different um, uh, plots here with long houses, and they consisted both with uh, living areas and buyer for small cattle on the, on the same roof. And this architectural style has in, uh, obvious influences from the rural areas. And the households here consisted of a whole family with women and children. And we can also see a specialized craft uh, was conducted in the close area. And this picture is oh, taken to the plots. The next. 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 
Yeah, this is, gives you an idea of the sudden quite rural parents. So, next phase. Uh, first half of the 12th century, there is an expansion in the urban settlement in this area. And the plots are straightened out and becomes, it becomes a more regulated city plan. The town yard lies in pairs, <coughs> divided by narrow passage. And a similar pattern is known from other Swedish towns, uh, as, such as Sigtuna. And we can see here in Cobblestone Street, part of the former shoreline. And the reconstruction of this. Next. Office. Next. So, we would like to suggest that the first urban settlement is built in relation to an early market street. In this map, you can see the plus we excavated. It's related to this market street in a straight, straight angle. And the distance between the settlement and the churches uh, suggests that the location of the churches are secondary in relation to the first year of the settlement. Now, food culture. Uh, what you eat depends on who you are and which social group you are belonging to. You can say that the type and degree of social community determines what you put on the dinner table. In this context, the town can be seen as a concept of a social belonging. And you get an urban food identity as soon as you have a material urbanity. Food culture is always, always identification, which makes it quite reasonable to assume that you eat in a similar way uh, that you want to, to identify with. It has, however, been important that you didn't eat above your own social group. That could have been uh, seen as an expression of claims that you not were entitled to. <coughs> In uh, archibotonical studies of food culture, you must use several source material, as we see here. <coughs> you need the plant, uh, plant macrofossils, pottery, bones, and all other objects in this context, even how the, how the food was prepared are important. The study of changes in food consumption over time must also be seen in the context of the emergence of an urban identity. Okay. And some conclusions. Oh, we're talking conclusions. Yes. Earshopping. At the time of the foundation of earshopping, the Swedish crown had a very weak position in, with regional limited power, and it's not likely that the town was founded by the king. Later, during the 12th century, the town was a very important place for the church in the province of Uppland. However, the church establishment seemed to have been preceded by the laying out of regular urban settlement with long narrow plots re re related to Market Street. And we suggest that this earliest urbanization of ear shopping was a result of a need for the marketplace for a local elite. And we also want to emphasize the importance of identifying several periods and process of urbanization, thus not seeing urbanization as a linear process. Surely urbanization may differ from later de de development developments with different groups that driving change. Thank you. Thank you.